Ladies, gentlemen, CISSP wannabes, I'm Colin Weaver. You're watching the IT Dojo CISSP Questions of the Day, where I come at you each time to help you prepare for your CISSP exam. And I do so by offering you two questions at a pop. Here comes question number one. Once you have identified that a system event is actually a security incident, what is the very first thing you would do, given the list I'm about to show you? So from that list, what's the first? Click pause, read them through. When you're ready, click play, and we discuss. All right, answer choice number one says that you should isolate the affected system from the network. Man, I like that choice. If I was being cocky on the exam, I might choose that and click next and move on, but I'm gonna be smart and say, I like that choice, but let me look at the other choices. Ooh, choice number two. Begin documenting everything. That's actually a better choice than the first one. So if you look at, you know, what are we doing? Okay, there's an incident. Let's begin the process. Document, document, document. Because when the people come at the end or through the middle and want to know the who, what, when, where, why, how, you need to have adequate documentation to be able to go and answer those questions. So Given a choice of which one I'm going to do first, I'm going to isolate the system from the network, or I'm going to begin the process of documentation from a technical perspective and from a you know, CISSP perspective, the better choice there would be for you to start documenting. Then isolate the system from the network if that was the appropriate action to take. Choice three says that you should pull the power cable and yank that bad boy off the network, which is kind of the same thing as number one, except much more aggressive. Um, I'm not saying that you're not going to eventually come to this point, but it is not the first thing you should do. Okay, so again, pulling the power may be warranted in certain circumstances, uh, but again, that should be decided well in advance. So don't rush to that one. Too specific. And the last answer choice, while certainly something that's going to be highly likely to occur, given the nature of the incident, um, Pulling, or excuse me, creating a forensic image of the system is not the first thing that you do. It may be something that you do, but it's not the first thing that you do. So just, just reading the question and being, being aware of what is it that I'm actually asking you, or in the case ISC squared is actually asking you, that's what you gotta pay attention to. So uh, start documenting. Action item number one. Question number two today, something I haven't talked about in a while. Uh, what I want to know is which of the following things that I'm going to show you is not a property of the Bell Lapidula security model. Click pause, read them through. When you think you got it, click play, and we'll answer it so. First choice is the simple security property, which most of you know probably as no read up. No read up is very much part of Bell Lapidula, so that's not the right answer. So a subject of a lower classification or lower security cannot read an object of a higher security. That is the simple security rule. Choice number two on the list says, how about the star property rule? The star property rule, more commonly known as no write down, that is also part of Bell Lapidula. So nope, not the right answer here. Again, you could compromise the confidentiality of information if you, as a subject of a higher uh, level were to write something to a lower level, you could be writing information to a lesser classification, thereby compromising the confidentiality of the information. And remember, all Bell Lapidula cares about is confidentiality, confidentiality, confidentiality. So no read up, no write down. All right, the next choice on the list is the tranquility principle. Generally speaking, the tranquility principle states that the uh, Security of the subjects and objects can't change while they're in use. Okay, so you can't say be reading something that if you have a, a label of secret and are reading a file that is secret and then somebody changes the file to top secret, that would compromise the tranquility of the system. So you can't do that. The file would have to be closed. You would have to release it and then we could change the, the, print, the permissions on it. Of course, when you tried to access it again, you'd be denied because no read up. So you can't violate the system's tranquility. Everything has to be, you know, kept nice and happy. And we going in and changing the security on the system while things are in use could violate your system security. And we don't want that. Fourth choice on the list is the strong star property. The strong star simply says that in order for a subject and object, or for a subject to have both read and write on an object, they have, both have to have the same classification. So 
Um, if I'm a subject with a label of secret and the object has also secret, then I could read and write that. But uh, in that circumstance, that's what Strongstar says. You have to have the same for both in order to be able to read and write. Well, that leaves us with the last choice, which if you knew that the Bell Lepidula model dealt exclusively with the confidentiality of data, seeing something called the simple integrity axiom should have been a dead giveaway. Uh, the simple integrity axiom is no read down, uh, but that is more associated with uh, integrity models, most specifically the uh, BIBA model. So um, no, not the one that we are interested in here. So all the first four are all things associated with Bell Lapidula, but the last one is not. So that makes it the right answer. Outstanding. Two more questions complete. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Maybe click like something. Be awesome. Maybe. Come on.